Hi, ladies. Beth from Be Styled. Time for another Tipsy Tuesday. Welcome. How we doing? <laughs> hey, remember back in the days when you worked and you had to give a presentation and you weren't prepared? That's kind of how I feel today. Um, <laughs> but good thing I don't have a boss other than you guys. And um, good thing we're not talking about brain surgery or anything very important. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining. I actually am somewhat prepared. I am gonna do an FAQ, a spring FAQ today. I went through um, some messages that I've gotten and Facebook posts and I've, there's some you know common questions that I get that I thought I would attempt to answer for you today um, as it relates to spring. As it, you know, it's 30 degrees here today. Some of you have beautiful spring weather. Some of you already have summer weather. God bless you. I don't know if I would like that though either. I wouldn't want it to be 90 degrees, but you know, 60 would be nice. 65 would be beautiful. So if you're getting that weather, good for you. I'm not yet. But in reality, it is spring. Spring is here. It's March. It's almost April. Friday is April 1st. And I know a lot of us are thinking about or have already started transitioning our closets. Um, now, I've talked in the past about how I don't do a big closet transition. I have a pretty, I don't have a fancy closet by any stretch, but I have a pretty big closet. Big, you know, it is a big closet. And I try, I keep everything in my closet. Um, I do take the ultra wintry things this time of year and move them to the back and take this and, and switch it with my more spring and summer pieces. Um, I will, I will post a link to this sweater. I know <laughs> people, I knew people were going to like this sweater and I almost returned it, Pam, because it's not really me. You know, me, this is me I'm going to talk about. I'm a, such a solids person. Um, and I don't wear, I don't have a lot of Navy, but I like Navy, but I saw this and I knew this collar detail is very on trend. So being the, you know, on trend girl that I am, <laughs> I decided to get this and I, I think it's Banana Republic, but I will, I will post the link. It's fun and it's good for, you know, for this time of year where I am especially. I'll wear it all summer long. I'll wear it with white jeans, white shorts, jeans. Today I'm wearing it with navy blue modern boho joggers and a pair of white sneakers. Um, but thank you, Pam. It's, it's, it's a good one. I'm glad I kept it. Um, anyway, so transitioning your closet. Like I said, I... Uh, Try to keep every I, I I try to keep everything in my closet because I'm able to. But if you have a a backup closet or a, a attic or something where you pack up everything that's out of season, now is probably the time to do that. Um, what I also try to encourage my people and myself to do is when you're shopping, and it also depends on your climate and where you live. But for me, I try not to go too heavy on ultra seasonal things you know, for either either warm weather or cold weather. I like to have the bulk of my wardrobe be pretty, you know, seasonless. Something that I can wear, like this sweater is an example. I would wear this next winter in the dead of winter, and I will wear it all summer long as well because of where I live. Now, if you live in Arizona, you're probably not going to wear a sweater like this. It's, it's probably cotton. It's a cotton sweater. Um, maybe you would wear it at night or in the air conditioning, but you know what I mean? Like it's not, of course I have cashmere and I have chunky sweaters, but I don't, I try not to go too heavy on those, that kind of thing, okay? Um, so it just makes, and it makes the transition easier. But here are some things to keep in mind as you transition from winter to spring. Um, yes, you're gonna put the ultra heavy, you know, the down coats, the fur, the chunky, chunky sweaters. Hopefully you're gonna put those away. I, I think I'm going to just, just on the basis of, you know, it seems like the right thing to do, even though I could be wearing them. I'm going to put those away, considering and taking into consideration the fabric. Um, I don't take into consideration the color as much. Um, I know a lot of people are, are think very seasonally when it comes to color, and I, I do as well. But I, I want you to be a little more open-minded about colors as well. Um, so. But, but when you're thinking about packing, and I'm going to get to that, but when you're packing things away, you're going to pack away fabrics that are clearly out of season and put those in another closet, in out of, out of, out of the front of your closet, okay? And then I want you to identify those things I was just talking about, those really versatile seasonless items that maybe you've always thought of as being winter items that you get rid of, that you pack away this time of year. 
and maybe reconsider them and, and consider wearing them into the early spring. Here are some examples um, of, I would call them like spring transitional pieces. Um, one is your classic trench. Now, most people don't think of that as being a winter thing, but your classic trench or, or jacket like that can look great with, you know, with your white jeans. Um, so keep that front and center. Um, or maybe it's like a pea coat. Maybe it's a navy blue pea coat that you think of as being a winter coat and you pack it away, but you live in New England. And how cute, for example, would a a navy blue pea coat, which I don't own, B, with this sweater and a pair of white jeans and a pair of tan loafers in the spring, especially on a, like a 50 degree spring day, that that lightweight pea coat, maybe it's not navy, just you know a, a lightweight coat, a lightweight wool coat um, would be great. I have a, a, a wool, I wore it on Sunday, fuchsia purpley color coat from Bowdoin that I got years ago that whenever I wear it, you ladies go bananas. Um, and it's a winter, it's a wool coat, but it is, it's, I don't wear it in the dead of winter because it's not that warm, but it was great on Sunday. So I keep those and wear them this time of year. Okay. Another example would be like a leather or a faux or a suede, faux, faux or real leather or suede moto jacket. Um, keep those front and center, even if it's black leather or, or especially if it's like a tan suede and wear them now with your like with like a floral dress. You know, this with like a tan suede moto jacket would be great um, this time of year with some tan suede bo booties. Um, whereas, you know, this dress is, you might think of as being very springy summery. The jacket you think of as being very wintry, but they work together, okay? So, um, and, and a black, mo like I think a black moto jacket with a t-shirt and a pair of white jeans and a pair of black sandals so, so chic this time of year, so chic. Okay, so um, consider those items. That's where I can read my writing. And a last example in, in that category would be your cardigans, your, your, you know, what you would consider your winter cardigans. Why not keep them, especially if they're in a color that you love for spring, like a blush or a cream. Um, but even if it's not, even if it's a burgundy cardigan, um, you could wear that with, again, white jeans or light stone colored pants and maybe like a cami, like a, a, a silky cami or tank under the cardigan. So you're, you're and, and you've got your lighter colors and even if it's a burgundy and then you wear like tan loafers again, that's, that's a way of resurrecting that burgundy sweater instead of saying, well, it's burgundy, so I'm putting it away because burgundy is fall, burgundy is winter. Maybe you might, if you have a ton of other more springy colored sweaters, maybe you do want to put the burgundy away. But if you love burgundy and burgundy is one of your great colors and it's not, you know, a chunky wool, wear it, wear it in the spring um, and just lighten it up with, with, you know, light wash denim, for example, or white denim or stone trousers, stone colored, you know, oatmeal, whatever trousers. Okay. Um, Let's see, so I think I said, blah, blah, blah. so, okay, yeah, I think I'm beating a dead horse there. You get, do you understand where I'm coming with that so far? Okay, so that is that. I have more to say though, Black. Well, so like denim, here's another question. Somebody asked, you know, cause I, in one of my most recent videos that I did within my spring group, I showed, I was talking about my, I'm wearing medium and light wash denim right now. I'm, I've just ordered a whole bunch of very, very light wash denim. I have medium, my go-to is a medium. By medium, I mean this versus dark wash, which is like a dark navy, almost looks black. I tend to always wear this color anyway, but if, you know, you know, dark, dark wash denim, somebody asked, should I be putting that away? And I guess it's probably a little less on trend right now, but if you love dark wash denim and it's just so flattering on you and, and it's just, it's just you, maybe you're, you have a very chic polished style and when you're wearing denim, you like a dark wash denim because it's just much more chic and polished. If that's like your style, then definitely keep the dark wash denim out. Um, if they fit you, if they flatter you, definitely keep them out and maybe wear them, you know, instead of with gray and gray, a gray sweater and brown boots, wear your dark wash denim with, um, something light. If you know, like, where's my, like, like a, a light colored top, like a white top, um, that has some interest and maybe, um, leopard flats or cognac 
sandals or tan loafers. So you're still wearing your dark wash, but you're lightening it up with what you're wearing it with. Okay. So I think that answers the, that's one person had all those questions. Nancy, are you watching? I answered your questions. I think, um, what's another thing, another, uh, trick I have for transitioning for spring. This is something that I got new this year because you know, I'm all about the neutral booties and I wear taupe booties all winter long. And I found these on Amazon. I think they're like 50 bucks. And let me tell you, they are comfortable and they look really good to me. Um, they are like, they don't even have a brand. God help us. They're probably coming straight from China, which I don't love. But in any case, maybe you have a brand that you love. This color, see the difference between this and I don't have my taupe ones. They're a lighter springier to my eye look. So there's the color. They also have this very deep cutout on the sides, which makes them more springy. You cannot wear socks with these. I will tell you that. I do have, um, and I'll link them, invisible, no-show, non-slip liners that I wear. Because um, even like my peach no-show socks kind of show a little bit with these. So, so I'll, I'll link a different option. Or you can go, but you could go barefoot if you don't mind that. Once it gets warm, I'll probably go barefoot. But I'll wear these for a while, especially they look great with, um, you know, with white jeans, with light wash jeans, any kind of jeans, and with skirts and dresses, bare legs. These look great. They do have a heel. Don't be afraid of the heel. I don't love a high heel. I don't even realize I'm wearing a heel when I wear these. Again, everyone's foot is different. You might not have as much luck with them as I do, but these have been a winner for me. I love them. And I just like the lighter color, but they're still neutral, okay? They look great with like, um, even like, you know, these like prairie dresses that people either love or hate, they look great with um, that, with bare legs. They look great with a skirt. I have this skirt um, and a booty like this in this transitional time. Looks fantastic. And you barely have to shave your legs. Only a little bit of your leg is showing, okay? Um, okay, I'm all over the map here. So keep me honest. Let me know if you have any questions. I do have notes. Um, I want to give a couple, this is just some review tips for the, just the act of transitioning your closet. Use that time to do a little quick, refreshing closet cleanse. You know, you're not going to, don't move things from winter to the back of your closet that you never wore, that you don't like, that don't fit you. Don't put them in the back of your closet, put them in a box and either tell yourself, all right, I'm going to give myself six months to decide or, or until put a date on it or better yet, if you really didn't wear them this winter and they don't fit you and you don't like them and you overlooked this item all winter long, do you really think that next winter you're going to pull that out and be like, woo, I can't wait to wear this. You know, no, you're not. So bless somebody else with it. Somebody else is going to love it. Put it in a bag and donate it sell it, whatever. Okay. But don't, don't, don't move it to the back of the closet. If you never wore it and you don't like it. Duh. Duh. Right. <laughs> okay. On, on the same note, don't bring things in from spring. I mean, when you bring your items in from spring, you should be psyched. Like you should be, be like, Oh my gosh, I for, almost forgot about this top. I can't wait to wear this top. Like I, you know, you should be excited to see, it should be like old friends that you're seeing. If it's like, Oh, here's that, you know, pink top that I've brought into my spring and summer wardrobe for the past three years and never wore, never liked, still doesn't fit me, Bye bye It's gotta go. Do not use that valuable space in your closet to bring in these things that are just like, you know? Be excited, bring the things in that you're excited for. I know you have them, okay? Um, Okay, so so and then and then there's the trick that that everyone talks about, but it's it's a good one. I I don't actually do it. I probably should. As you're bringing in your new, your your things for spring and summer, and I would say do this, depending on the size of your closet, maybe you could just do this for spring and summer. Like you have your warm weather wardrobe and your cold weather wardrobe. That's pretty much what I do. But but if 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 there are things that you're not sure about, hang them you know, with the hanger facing the wrong way. So if it's something you're like, I'm not so sure I'm going to wear this. Hang it with the hanger the wrong way. And then when you go to wear it, put it the other way 
or the or vice versa. So as just a reminder that you were questioning it, and then when oh yeah, I did wear it, then maybe it's a keeper. But if it's staying in the same hang and the hanger is staying that way all season long, and you're never wearing it, that's another ding 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 ding. It can go. And don't think of it as being oh I'm wasting my money. It, I why did I ever buy it? Don't beat yourself up. Just be like think of it as you're giving someone a gift. You are gifting it to somebody and they're going to love it and they're going to, you know, appreciate it. So donate it. Okay, so that's that lecture on closet cleansing. Now's a good time to do that. Um, now I'm going to get into some nitty gritty styling tips. Okay. Um, I'm with you in Acton right there with you, the year round sweaters. Oh, hi, Pam. You are in Acton. I guess I knew that. Um, okay, everyone loves my sweater or Pam loves my sweater. Do we have any other questions? Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Mary. I have a longer legs look with a dress. I have to have longer legs for that look with a dress. Mary. Well, you have to buy, you have to buy the dress in a petite sizing. Mary is very petite. And I guess you could say that, that you think you're talking about the longer dress and the booties that, that can be tough on petites, but, but everything else has to be proportionate to you. You have to buy petite sizing so that the dress is the right length. And I don't know. I think I think the booty could work, especially if it has a little heel and it's 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 the same, you know, it's a neutral color. It can work. Don't 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 say you can't just because you're petite. Try it. You might it might just work, okay? But you're going to have to make sure everything else is in proportion to your petite body. Um everyone loves my nautical sweater. Closet clean out, so worth it. She found a blouse on the floor in the back of her closet. Yeah, like you might find, you know, that you, you don't, you probably are going to find that you barely need to shop. I mean, granted, you might want to shop, and I'm all for that. You know, if you have certain trends that you want to want to um, jump on, you know, why not? We've been, we've been, this the last couple of years have just stunk, let's face it. And I feel like this is the spring that we're like the inmates being let out of the asylum. So if you want to shop and grab some fun things, whether it's like a nautical sweater, if this is your style, or um, I'll talk about some of the, the trends that you're going to see that here's another note when we talk about trends, you know, the 80, 20 rule that I talk about that everyone talks about, it's called the, is it Pareto? The Pareto principle, 80-20 applies to a lot of things. It applies to your wardrobe in a couple ways. I always say 80% of your wardrobe, you should spend, you should put, you should spend, well, well, no, let me start over. Most of us wear 20% of our wardrobes 80% of the time, right? That's one thing to keep in mind. Try to give those that 80, that, that the rest of that 80%, some love, you know? Don't just wear those same 20% all the time. But, but on the same note, you want to spend 80% of your, your money, like your wardrobe budget on those. I'm not making any sense. I, I just, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Wait, 20, you want to spend 80% on the 20. Basically it's basics. Your basics are 80% of your wardrobe and you're going to spend the bulk of your, of your budget on those basics, those versatile pieces. Okay. They're, and they're usually trend free. They're not ultra trendy. Okay. But the other 20% are your trends, all your, are your fun pieces. And yeah, you want to have those in your wardrobe, but, but keep, keep, you don't want it to be the flip. You don't want to have 80% really fun, wild, crazy things. And then, you know, no black pants to wear them with no jeans, no basic shoes. Okay. Um, I'm beating a dead horse. You know what I'm talking about. Let's move on. Let's talk about some trends, okay? Trends are, again, you might say, you know what? I don't like trends. I'm not wearing trends. And that's fine. Absolutely fine. It is, it could, it'd be easy to fall into the habit of looking kind of dated if you refuse to say, refuse trends. A lot of us, um, I think a lot, I think it's a lot of people that have like, you know, teenage daughters or you know, it's easy to say, you know, I hate the way they dress. I hate these new trends. I'm not doing it. Try not to have that fixed of a mindset when it comes to trends. Be open. And, and yes, you can wear any trend. It does not, how you can wear anything you want. It does not matter how old you are. Let's just put that one to bed. There are no limits on age. If you want to wear it, you can wear it. It does not matter how old you are. Same goes with trends. The flip side is if you don't like a trend, 
you don't have to wear it. Even if I tell you, oh, this is like the it color or the it top. No, not if you don't like it. It's There's no such thing as a trend that you have to have. Okay? Um, I'm right there with you, Savati. I know. We're going to talk about solids, classic solids, stripes. We're going to talk about that next because that was a discussion in our group as well. Um, but I lean that way too as well. Um, but um, here, just I'm just going to throw out some trends that you can take or leave. Um, and if you're tempted to try a trend and you don't want to spend a lot of money on it, my recommendation is to go to Target. They do a great job with trends and you can try a trend very inexpensively. Um, now, let's see, where do I want to start? Again, these kind of dresses, I call them like Little House on the Prairie dresses. They, they can be pretty awful, I have to say. Sometimes they can be really, really awful. They, there were memes all over the internet or like jokes on Instagram about Target, like last season, I think, like with these prairie dresses that were just really high-waisted and then layers and layers of frill and yeah, no one was really looking that good in those. But I picked up this one thanks to Cassie Sugar, High Sugar Plum. She had this on and I was like, oh, it looks... So I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or not. It still has its ta the tag on it. But I like the pattern. I'm not much of a pattern person, but this pattern spoke to me personally. you got to find the patterns that speak to you. But this is this style dress you're seeing everywhere if you haven't already. Um, it's hitting me at a good spot. It's hitting below the widest part of my calf. You don't want it to hit at the widest part of your calf. It's hitting below that on me, but it's still showing my ankle and maybe this much skin. I like that it has an open neckline. Um, because it's got long sleeves, it's a long dress. If it had a high neck, it would just be like too much, too much fabric. What Cassie did that I like with this, do I have it, is she added a belt, which I know I brought down here. It's a belt I've shown you guys. Oh, here it is. It's a nice Amazon belt. It's under $10. Um, it's a stretchy woven straw kind of belt. And by adding that to a dress like this, if it works with the type of dress, really helps gives it, give it some shape. The other thing that gives a dress like this some shape, and if you're not a pattern person, tones down all this busy pattern, is adding a jacket. Whether it's, you know, that moto jacket I mentioned, like a tan suede moto jacket, or just a denim jacket. Or it could even be a, a, a blazer, like a, a, this looks like it's black, a black ponte knit blazer could work. And it changes the style of the dress. You know, the denim is going to make it more casual. A blazer is going to make it a little more dressy. Maybe you could even wear it to work. Um, and you could you could even switch out a belt like this for like a black, that black leather belt from Amazon that I show all the time with the two gold circles. You could use that on a dress like this with a black blazer. Maybe even a pair of black pumps and make this like a work appropriate dress. And then completely change it up with your denim jacket, your straw belt, and a pair of sandals, like a pair of, uh, either a pair of booties. You could wear this casually with a pair of booties or with a pair of sandals. These are the sandals a lot of us got last year. You'll see things like this this year too from Madewell. These are from <laughs> Target. You're gonna see a lot of braided type sandals or a, even a flat sandal, okay? So, the, I call them Little House on the Prairie dresses. Call them what you want. Um, if you don't like, if, you don't, if you're not a print person, um, you could always go with a solid. I found this one at TJ Maxx Home Goods or TJ Maxx, um, what's it called? The high end part of TJ Maxx Runway. Um, and it's, I haven't taken the tags off this yet either, but it's the same kind of style, but it has, has a built in belt. A lot of times I take the built in belt and, and swap it out for my own belt. Um, but it, by, because it's belted, it's fit, nice and fitted up through until the waist. It's got the flouncy sleeves that are very on trend, but not over the top. And it's got the same length. And it's the solid version of that type of dress. Um, or you might say, and some people in our group have said, you just don't like that style. Like Mary, for example. How much do we all love Mary? If, if, if she, when she was 55, even if these were the most on trend things in the world, and I showed her this dress, she would say, no, I'm taking a hard pass. Just not her style at all. And um, so be it. That's, that's the beauty of style. You get to pick your own, right? 
Okay. Um, what other trends? So the other, another very popular trend that you may love, you may hate, I've grown to actually like it, are the puff sleeves. Now there are degrees of puff. You're gonna see some that are just whew, like literally like puffy shoulder pads. And that's very, very on trend and chic and, for, and people love it. Or there's just something like this. This is a, an Amazon top, comes in a gazillion colors that gives you just a tiny little bit of a puff and it, you know, it's a short sleeve, so it's 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 a take on that trend, but still very wearable. This comes in a bazillion colors, um, and it's kind of a dress. You could consider this sort of a dressy top. You could wear it to work with a blazer or without, or you could you could dress it up. You could wear it with a cool necklace, dressy, um, and you'll see t-shirts like that too, casual t-shirts uh, like that as well. So puff sleeves are popular. This kind of top is popular, kind of like the dress. It's the, like the peasant, peasant type blouses um, in solids or patterns. You pick, um, you know, and like if, if you are, a, a, let's say, let's say, uh, let's use the example of someone from our group who gravitates to all patterns. Like she loves patterns. And there are a lot of people who, who just, they grab, they're, they're, they're more exciting. They're more interesting. Um, but it's tough to have a closet full of pattern unless you have a huge wardrobe. If you, if you have a huge wardrobe, you know, and that's okay with you, knock yourself out and have all the pattern you want. But if you're trying to have a capsule wardrobe or a really consolidated wardrobe or you're packing for a trip, having a slew of patterns is very limiting, right? Um, but you, it doesn't mean you have to have all solid colored, you know, t-shirts, like just plain t-shirts in a solid, in a million solid colors. I'm not saying that. You could find, um, and I just ordered one from Target, picture a top like this um, in only this green color. That's kind of like what the top I ordered. It's like a greenish blue. But it's solid, but it has some interest. It's got interesting sleeves. I think it even had some cutouts, some like eyelid or lace cutouts. So it's still a solid top, but it's interesting, okay? Um, and they're everywhere. Go to Target, go to, go to Loft. Um, if you're in my, if you're in my style system, uh, group, you have the catalog and I keep, I, yesterday I added a ton of tops like that to the catalog. I call them like they're, they're elevated, they're basics. There's, they might be solid, it might be a solid white top, but it's, it's, it can stand on its own. You know, it's not just a white t-shirt, which is always great too, but a white top like this, if you like this kind of look can completely stand on its own. Um, and, and doesn't even need, doesn't need to wear a pair of jeans or a pair of like olive cargo, whatever, or a skirt. And it stands on its own. It doesn't need a third piece. It doesn't need a, a bunch of fancy jewelry because it's, it's a statement of, its, in and of itself, but it's also a white shirt. So it's very versatile. Okay. How are we doing? It's neat how she mixes and adds her belts to things. This is, we're probably talking about, um, Cassie. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, she's amazing, I love her. Um, classic, solids. So when it comes to the whole solids pattern debate, let's say, you gotta do you, you know? Don't force it. If you, if you love your solid, if you love your patterns, go for it. If you're a solid person like I am, then go for it. I'm gonna sh give you um, my kind of tip for especially what I how I dress in mostly solids while trying to keep things kind of interesting. I have my little it's my rule of three colors that I've talked about before that I want to demonstrate today. Okay, but before I do that, I also want to address this 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 top as an example of a pattern, but it's it's also what I would call a neutral pattern. Stripes are a neutral pattern. What are other neutral patterns? They are you know polka dots, black and white polka dot. Stripes, obviously. Um, leopard print is a neutral pattern. Camo print is a neutral pattern. Gingham, very popular this, this season. And guess what? I had a gingham shirt in my spring style system. Was that last year, ladies, or the year before? So gingham is very popular right now, but you know I'm not exactly cutting edge. And I had a gingham shirt in that my style system at least a year ago, if not two years ago. So those are classic patterns that are also neutral they and, and they're versatile they you can mix them you could mix a striped top with a floral scarf um 
because that it just works. You know, I don't do that that much, but people who do, like Rebecca, who's here, she's a master pattern mixer. And there are a lot of you out there, but what a neutral pattern top, for example, lets you do is it lets you to be creative mixing like a leopard belt with it or whatever, because it's, it's, it's a, it's a neutral pattern. Okay. Um, but let's, let's talk about the color, the rule. I hate the word rule, but we'll, for lack of a better word, the rule of three, when it comes to colors and in this case, solid dressing and how to make your solid dressing a little more interesting, because how often do you go to get dressed? And you put on a pair of jeans and a color top because you're feeling really, you know, colorful. And boom, you're ready, you're done. That's it. Or a pair, of, or your black. You're going to work. You put on your black work pants and a pink blouse, and you're like, okay, this is good, and it's fine, right? But in both of those scenarios, you're wearing two. And then, and then most of the time, what I used to always do too, back in my working days, I would have put on a pair of black shoes. I'd wear my black pants, my black shoes, and my pink shirt, and that's it. Okay, so that's fine, but what, what is that? That's two colors. It's the pink and the black, or the denim and the pink. Let's say you're wearing jeans and a pink top, and then black shoes. That's basically, to the eye, it's basically two colors. The black and the denim kind of meld into one in that scenario, especially if it's dark wash denim and the pink top, okay? It's okay, it's just not great. It's not really exciting. And if you're, if you like to be a little more, you know, if you're a big pattern person, for example, and you like to add interest, that's gonna feel really boring to you. You're not gonna feel excited to wear that outfit. So let's take my example, let's see. What was I gonna do? Let's see, I literally just grabbed these things out of my closet. So don't ask me how to buy them. I know there's yellow sweaters everywhere and I will link a great yellow sweater I just found on Amazon again. Um, but this, this, you gotta find the right yellow for you. This is a kind of a cool yellow for my cool summer coloring. Um, but yellow is, again, it's a great color and it's popular this spring, but I would argue it's pretty popular every spring, right? So let's say you've got your yellow or any color, substitute any color, yellow sweater and a pair of jeans. So there's your two colors. Now let's say you say to yourself, you know, Beth told me once that gray and yellow look great together. Or you saw on Pinterest a girl wearing gray and yellow and you thought, okay, I wanna wear gray. So you go to your closet and you're like, all right, I have options for gray shoes. I have my funky patent leather shoes. Um, I could wear these. They're gray, or these are a pattern, but they read gray to me. So, okay, so I'm gonna have my yellow denim, and now I've added gray. So there's my three colors, right? Now, let's take it a step further, though, because what are we gonna do? We're always gonna put jewelry on, okay? So think about, um, someone I was listening to was talking about how, how you always wanna have a friend, like your outfit wants to have a friend or a pair. So there you're thinking of something that comes in twos. So the way my little brain works is I would look at my gray shoes and I would say, okay, how am I gonna kind of make the gray make sense? You know, the, col the solid color and the denim just work and then I'm adding the gray. How am I gonna make the gray make sense? Especially since the gray's at my feet, I wanna bring some gray up, up, up above. So what am I gonna do? I would add silver jewelry. Even if the color guru told me that I look better in gold, which she didn't, she told me I look better in silver, I'm still, I'm gonna wear, I, I change the color of my jewelry based on my outfit. I really believe most people can wear both. That's just my opinion. But, and I use jewelry, the color of my jewelry, to create that outfit, to create the, um, call it a bookend, call it, you know, the, the, the rule of two friends, having two things be the same, similar. And that's, that would be the example of, you know, silver with these on my feet, one of the only two, only you wear, you pick one. You're not going to wear, you know what I mean? And then <laughs> the two colors. So there's gray, yellow, and denim. And the gray and the silver are friends. Did that make any sense? Can you think about that the next time you get dressed and see if that makes any sense? That's how my, my brain works. Now I'm going to try it another way. I'm going to use these two colors. I'm going to do a bone colored pant. These are great from Spanx. These are great pants. Um, a bone pant and a colored tank. Um, this is this is from Peach, and it's actually kind of a pinky, peachy color um, that I love, and it has this great 
like built-in tie, so you don't have to worry about how to half tuck it. You just put it on, and it and it's already looks like it's half tucked without messing with it. No rubber bands or anything. Okay, so there's my there's my let's call that the foundation, my top, and my pants. Now this is springtime, so you know normally I'd be talking about third pieces. A lot of you are in warm weather areas, and a lot of us will be in warm weather areas where you know maybe you don't want to wear a jean jacket. That's always an option. You don't want to wear a, a jacket. So let's let's talk about just wearing this as it is. It's a warm day, so you're wearing a sleeveless top or a t-shirt and these pants. So you've got those two colors. Now, what would I do? How would my little brain work? I would go with, I'll do a couple things here. I would go with a neutral shoe, any, any neutral shoe. These are the ones I got last year. Okay, so in, so the shoe sort of mimics the pants. Technically, it's a third color because it is a little darker. So you could, you could at that point say, that's my third, okay? That could be my third color. Um, I would probably add, a, I might add this belt because it's in my hand and it's basically the same color as the pants. So that works. If the belt is a different color than your pants and a different color than your shirt, sometimes it, it, I don't like it as much. It breaks everything up. By keeping it the same color or the same tone, adding a belt, it keeps it more cohesive and elongating and flattering. Um, if, it, if I didn't have a belt this color, I would just skip the belt. You don't have to wear a belt. This top would go over the belt loops. You're not gonna see the belt loops. Okay, but if I wanted to, to use this as a feature, I would add it. Okay, but let's say, so let's say I'm here. I've got this and this. Now, for jewelry, I have a couple options. The way I would think is, okay, I'm wearing these, in my mind, this lent, this color shoe lends itself to gold. So I would add gold jewelry, gold necklaces. Or I could say, you know what? Really, I'm only at two colors. I'm at bone slash tan slash off-white, you know, like a neutral and a color. That's two. So I could go crazy and introduce a completely new color, in which case I'd probably do this because I like these two colors together. I could add a necklace and this becomes my third color. Um, I like the way the turquoise works with this peachy pink. Um, and then that's my outfit. Three colors. One, two, <laughs> three. And then I would wear gold hoops and call it a day. Okay? So that is, and those are, those are two examples of solid outfits that could be kind of boring and not that great, but just by thinking in terms of those three colors and, and, the, and the pairing of your jewelry. Well, really, it's coming down to your accessories and your jewelry. Now, let's say you really are a pattern person. I know you're out there and you're like, well, that's great, Beth, but that's still to me. I just, some people just feel like they look better in pattern. They feel more of themselves in pattern. So you could obviously just wear a pattern top you could, you could, your top could have a pattern, or you could bring pattern in with your accessories. I'm really making a mess here. And the easiest, one of the easiest and least expensive ways to do that is with scarves. Let's see if we're gonna get lucky here. Oh, we are. <laughs> we're gonna get lucky. My, this scarf is from a spring style system, again, maybe four or five years ago, from the loft. And I just dropped it. So you have your pattern scarves, which a lot of us have way too many of, ladies, when you're doing your spring switch over, go through your scarves. I guarantee you, you probably have like 10 that you can give away. If you're like most of the closets I go into, people have too many darn scarves and they don't even like most of them. I'm, I'm, I, have, I have three patterned scarves, four total and to my name. And here are two of them. This is, this is a favorite um, and it, you know, it just kind of goes with most of the colors in my closet. So that's what, that's, that's what you want to go for, right? Have scarves that work with most of your solids. And there you've just added your pattern um, to this outfit. I mean, what, what a great outfit that is. I would ditch the necklace. You've got your bone pants, your colored top, and your scarf. And, and you don't have to copy this. You're going to do your neutral, whatever pants you want to wear, your, say, neutral colored pants. Um, or white, maybe, your color top. It could be purple, it could be 
mustard. It could be whatever color, blue, okay? And then you've got your scarf that ties it all together. And that's a great way of introducing pattern um, to a solid outfit. Um, another idea would be a belt. I've grabbed this on sale at uh, Anthropology last year. I talk all the time about how I love to get unique things at Anthropology. It's never it's never cheap. I try to I usually find things on sale though, but I always love them. Like this is one of those pieces that um, I wore this in the fall as well. I didn't find I didn't bring it out in the winter, but I I you know came across it in my closet just today, and I was like oh, I'm so psyched I have this. So psyched I have this. Oh my gosh. I would wear this, you know, I would totally wear this belt with this top and these pants, or I would wear this belt with this top. And there I'm, I'm bringing pattern into my otherwise very, oh, look at that. I'm bringing pattern into my otherwise very solid um, wardrobe. So, I guess that's sort of my sales pitch for, for having, you know, more solid than pattern. Can we agree that it's probably better to have more solids than pattern? Um, you just have more options that way. I wonder, like I'm thinking about like this dress. Could I wear this belt with this dress? I quite possibly could. I think I could. I could, I could completely transform this dress by adding a belt like this. You know, and then I would, and then I would probably um, just keep my shoes very neutral. They, these shoes just disappear on my foot, um, and I might even, you know, I would dress it down with my, I don't have it here, my darker wash denim jacket. Um, that's that's got, you know, just a, this would be too light. This one's too light, but it's more of like this wash denim jacket to kind of dress it down, or just wear it like this. So anyway. That's sort of, there's, that's the method to my madness when it comes to creating outfits. Think about the three colors. Uh, don't go crazy, you know, you know, don't overanalyze it too much, but three colors and then think about tying, especially the top of your outfit down and the bottom of your outfit, tying those together somehow. Jewelry and shoes are the most logical ways to do that. Um, but as the more you do it, the more you'll you'll think, well, well, how could I do it with my belt? Or how could I do it with my jacket? How could I tie it together? Um, not matchy matchy things, but make it cohesive and in, in keeping with that three color rule. Wow, did that make any sense? Do you think you can try that and let me know if it made any sense? Because <laughs> um, I just gave you a glimpse inside, <laughs> inside the, the crazy mind that is my mind, my brain, because that's kind of how I think. And then, and the more you do it, the more it's just, it's just gonna, it's just gonna, it just happens. You don't even realize you're doing it. Like today, for example, I'm kind of breaking that quote rule. I'm wearing white sneakers, navy pants, navy and white striped top. So you, you, if you were, a, if you were a rule follower out there, you'd say, well, Beth, you're only wearing two colors. Well, but I'm not, right? Because if I, because if I didn't put any jewelry on, right, I'd be wearing two colors. I added silver jewelry. That's my third color, ladies. That's why I harp on it all the time. It doesn't have to be a big, crazy necklace. It's, these are simple hoops from Jamie at Flirty Finds. Thank you, Jamie. They're a great size. They're hammered and interesting. And this is one of my go-to Stella and Dot necklaces. And that's my, that is sort of my third color, right? Um, you know, if I really want, if I, if I wanted to, I could also add, what would I add, like for a jacket? You know, I was freezing, so I put on my white denim jacket, which isn't bringing in another color, but it's adding some interest. If I really wanted to bring in a third color here, I would probably bring in olive, I'd probably do like an olive field jacket. Um, or you could do like a blush colored field jacket, and that would be my third color. But without it, I'm still covered because I've got my earrings on, and the silver counts as a color. Gold counts as a color, um, and you know, Keep that in mind, you know, when you're wearing, when I'm wearing shoes like these, I think if I need to tie it in, if this needs, something needs to be tied in, I'm wearing these shoes, I think gold. It just, that's just the way I think. If I was wearing my loafers and I wanted to tie it in, I would wear silver. And it, it just creates a cohesive look. Okay, 
It takes total, it makes total sense to me. Finally, some actually explains in a way I understand. Well, Pam, if you understood that, <laughs> good for you. Cause I'm going to go back and rewatch this and be like, did I make any sense? I hope this was helpful. I think you ladies are just really nice people. I wish I could have you in my closet for half a day. Luana, where do you live? If you live locally, I'll come to your closet. I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, I've always thought to sit down and write a whole blog post about this, but to me, it's just, it's easier for me to explain it and show it. Um, and if you have questions, reach out to me. If this, if, if this something didn't make sense, which I'm sure it didn't, um, please reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to help. Because it doesn't have, it's, I'm making it sound much more complicated than it really needs to be. It really, and, and if you're not wearing three colors, your, your outfit, it's not like your outfit is awful. Um, and if you're wearing five colors, it doesn't mean your off, outfit is awful. But if you're looking to try to maximize your wardrobe and, and look cohesive and pulled together and polished and chic, that's just a good framework to work within, okay? Because when you, when you do have like five colors, it's, unless it's like a dress, I mean, how many colors are in this dress? One, two, this has multiple colors. But it's, but they, you know, it works. Um, but you know, if you're wearing, you're not going to go out there and wear, you know, pink pants and a yellow top and a blue jacket and orange, like you wouldn't do that anyway. But now you know why, because <laughs> three is the number. Okay. That's why, that, and, and when you see somebody on the street or at church or at the store and you think, wow, I really like her outfit without being like obnoxious about it, look at her be like, why do, why do you think that outfit works so well? Oh, look at her. She's got, she's got three colors, not five, not two, not one. She's got three colors and, um, she's got a, she's got a, a, a pairing happening with her shoes and her earrings or her scarf and her shoes. Okay. Now I'm starting to ramble, but just, this just made me think of, of something because one of the big trends, when I think about one color, that is a very popular trend. So head to toe monochromatic dressing is always good. I think it's always chic. Um, and this season you're going to see it. If you go into magazines, which does anyone read magazines? No, if you go on Pinterest or the internet, Instagram, that's one of the trends. It's head to toe, whether it's a dress, like a solid dress in one color, like a longer dress or a jumpsuit or separates that are meant to go together or joggers in a tank at the gym that are meant to go together in the same color. You know, of course, black applies, but actual color, monochromatic dressing, very, very hip and on trend. Um, but that's where, you know, you, you, you're being intentional. You're saying I'm wearing, you know, head to toe, I have the, what have here? This blue gray. Um, these are the Zion pants. I showed you these last week with the matching tank. So that's monochromatic head to toe. But what I would probably do, I mean, what I did do when I wore this is I added a, a black thin, very strap, strappy sandal and my black denim jacket, which is not here, but I just, I liked, I liked, for a dressier look, I like the way this all blue looked with black. And then if I took the jacket off and wanted it to be, I think it's dressier without a jacket, then, you know, the black shoes work. It could be nude shoes, but to me, the black worked. And then I would probably wear, with this, I would wear silver jewelry, um, but I, well, you wouldn't have to, you could wear gold. But to me, this kind of lends itself to silver. But that is one, um, look at how caveat. But then if I want to add pattern, look at my scarf. I didn't plan this, but you know, when you're buying things, ladies, buy things that make sense for the rest of your wardrobe. You know, it's, it's, not, by, it's not an accident that I'm able to just pull my only two scarves and have them, have it work with like everything on my rack. I didn't plan this. That's what you want in your wardrobe. You want it to, to make sense. You don't need to copy my colors. You need to get the right colors for you. You know, and, and, and buy intentionally colors and patterns and solids that, that let you mix and match everything in your wardrobe. Okay. All right. That's what I have for you today. I wish I could have it. Um, do we have any questions? And did I miss anyone, any of the frequently asked questions? I, I had them. I think I covered them all about closets and 
um, and whatnot. Does anyone have any questions? Do you want me to clarify anything that I just rambled on about? There's Beverly. Beverly's one of my pattern girls. Did I give you a good sales pitch on um, the beauty of solids, Beverly? These are, these are the kind of things we talk about um, in our private group. How do you tie the scarf? Excellent question. It's gonna be hard to show you with this sweater because I would never wear a scarf with this, but pretend I'm wearing, you know, a white t-shirt. I am not one of those people. If you're, if you're interested in, in really cool ways to tie scarves, just Google how to tie a scarf. I do one of two or three ways. My most common way is just this. <laughs> That's about it. I just go like that. You know, and then you could, if you, if you didn't want the tails, I usually like the tails. That creates a vertical, two vertical lines down the front. Or, or you could shorten it and tie it like that if you want to just and get the color around your face. Here's a, here's a tip. Let's say you're wearing, um, you know, stark white, for example, a stark white t-shirt. And someone, you know, the color guru or your stark white is not the best around your face. That's where a scarf comes in handy. Same with black. If black's not great around your face, you can still wear your black top, your white top, just by adding a scarf and putting that around your face. Because when color experts tell you not to wear, that certain colors aren't great for you, they're talking about it around your face. You know, there are some people who take it to the, to the, to the next level and say, well, I'm not good in black, so I don't even own black pants. And if that's how you want to do it, that's fine. If you want to have a really cohesive wardrobe, but that's just not that wouldn't work for me. Um, and really, it's, 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 it's around your face that color matters, right? Um, so, but that's how I tie, that's how I would tie. Again, ladies, we're not wearing this scarf. I don't think, no, with this sweater. She just wanted to know how to tie it. If you're joining me late and saying, why is she wearing a scarf with that big collared sweater? It's because somebody wanted to see how I tie it. So I do that, or I do um, this way where I just take for a long oblong sort of like the tie, a tie, scarf like this, like this, and put it around my neck. And then I like the other way better, but this is the other way. And then just pull it through like that. That's another way. Um, if you, if it's warm out and you're just wearing your scarf to add that pattern and you don't want, you don't want it around your neck, you can just hang it over your neck like so. Um, or then sometimes I just did this the other day with the other scarf. I'll just tie a knot on each end just to kind of finish it off and then just let it hang, let it hang. And it's like, it's like a built in patterned, interesting necklace. It replaces, you could still wear your little necklace, right? But this becomes your necklace again, not with the sweater. Um, okay. So that answers that question. I love when you ladies have questions. Thanks Luana for that question. Any other questions? Um, those are basically the ways, the way I tie scarves. You can find all kinds of interesting ways on the internet. Um, I'm just not good at that kind of stuff. All right. Well, I think I've beaten that dead horse. Um, I hope, hope it was helpful. Um, thanks for joining me today. And it's almost one o'clock. So if you're not dressed, you're late, get on it. Go put some clothes on, do something good for yourself, slap some lipstick on, have a great day, and I'll see you soon. If not, definitely next Tuesday at noon. Thanks for watching, ladies.